This is Algebra 2 with Trig. This is 8.2, Graphing Rational Equations. For this lesson, we are going to graph when you have an X on top and on bottom. So we have certain rules that we need to follow depending on where the X's are and depending how the equations are written. When the degree of the numerator, that's the top, where the degree is your exponent. So when the degree of the top, the degree of the bottom is the exponent. So when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. That's what we had yesterday. That would be an equation like 1 over x would be the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom. So today what we're going to work on is the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. That's the top has the same exponent as the bottom. When that happens, we're going to look at the ratio between the leading coefficients of each polynomial. This will give us our horizontal asymptote. This one also gave us a horizontal asymptote. So to determine the horizontal asymptote, we have to look at the exponents. Is the top smaller or are they the same? We're also going to calculate what's known as a vertical asymptote. And you need to set the denominator to 0 and solve for x. So that's what we'll do here. So we're going to take our denominator to find the vertical asymptote. We're going to set the denominator equal to 0, and we're going to solve. So x is negative 2. So that's our vertical asymptote. So that means you can put your vertical asymptote on your graph and label it x equals negative 2. Then we're going to look for a horizontal asymptote. Now we notice the degrees are the same. The degree is 1, the degree is 1. So we're going to use the leading coefficients. So we're going to have y equals 3 over 1 which is known as 3. So that is our horizontal asymptote because the degrees are the same we use the leading coefficients. Now we're going to look at numbers that we're going to plot on the right side of our vertical asymptote and three numbers that we're going to plot on the left side. You can pick any x values you want as long as it's not the vertical asymptote you can pick any numbers you want I'm going to suggest to spread those numbers out a little bit so two further down was going to be zero and two more will be two and two more will be four just trying to spread out as much as we can we could even go further but I want to keep it consistent and symmetrical with the other side so when we plug in zero when x equals 0, we get 3 times 0. 3 times 0 is 0, so you're left with negative 6. 0 plus 2 is 2, so that's going to give us negative 3. So when x is 0, we are at negative 3. So that's 2 from this asymptote. 2 to the right, so we're now we're going to go 2 to the left. That takes us to negative 4. We had to go down 6 total, so we have to go up 6 total. So that's a total, actually a total of 9, because it's 6 from the asymptote and the 3 to get back to our counting from the x-axis. So that is up at 9. When we plug 2 in, plug 2 in, we get 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 
So 6 minus 6, that's 0. And that's going to be divided by 2 plus 2, which is 4. Anytime you're dividing a number into 0, you get 0. So when x is 2, we get 0. So from the asymptote's point of view, we're over 4 and we're down 3. So we're going to go to the left 4 and up 3. So that's really up 6. So we're at negative 6 to the left and we're up 6 from our x-axis. So from our origin, over 6, up 6. And then 4. When we plug in 4, I'm using my calculations. I'm plugging them in for x. So 3 times 4, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. Plugged in a 4. So 4 plus 2 is 6. And that comes out nicely to become a 1. So when x is 4, I'm up here at 1. That allows me to plot my line. Now from my asymptotes, that's over 6 and down 2. So I have to go over 6 and down, or actually up 2. It's always going the opposite direction because it's a symmetric to each other. We want to write our equation. y equals 3x minus 6 over x plus 2. And that last point was at negative 2, 4, 6, 8. And we were up 3, 4, 5. So now we have our table that's completed with all the points on our graph. We have our asymptotes related, labeled. We know we have a horizontal asymptote at negative 3. Our domain. What are the x values that would be appropriate to use in the graph? We could use any numbers in the graph except the asymptote, which is x equals negative 2. What answers can you get? That's the range. What are the y values that you can get? It exists all down here, it exists going up, all the way to you get to 3. So y is all the numbers, but not including 3. So y equals 3. It's everything except 3. All real numbers except 3. So we started out with identifying the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. We picked numbers, we did some calculations, we did some counting, and we wrote our domain and range. So you go ahead, pause the video, give this a try, see what you think. I'll let you know right now that I'm going to do 1, or negative 1, 1, and 3. Because you could really pick any numbers, but if you want your numbers to really match mine, you can go ahead and use those numbers. So we're going to look at the vertical asymptote, and that's x plus 3. That gives us a vertical asymptote at negative 3. And then we're going to look at a horizontal asymptote. When the degrees are the same, both the exponents are the same, we use the leading coefficients. And again, in this case, there's no number written here. So it's negative 2 over 1. So y equals negative 2 over 1, which is just known as negative 2. So y equals negative 2. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 2. Our vertical asymptote is x equals negative 3. Now we're going to try to determine 
This one's a little trickier. The, the numbers don't lead to landing on integers very well. So we'll do some calculations. When x equals negative 1, we're going to plug negative 1 into this. So negative 2 times negative 1. That gives you a total of 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Let's see. Let's try that again. Negative 1 plus 3 is actually 2. Let's take a look at when x equals 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 minus 1 more is negative 3. 1 plus 3 is 4, so you get negative 3 fourths. And then the last one, when x is 3, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Minus 1 is negative 7. 3 plus 3 is 6. So we get negative 7 sixths. All right, we can try to plot those. At negative 1, I'm going to be at a half. At positive 1, I'm going to be at negative 3 fourths. At positive 3, I'm going to be at negative 7, 6. Well, 7, or 6 over 6 is a value of 1. So 7 over 6 is more than 1. So I have it just below the negative 1. You don't need to use your calculator. So we can plot those and draw the line. Now on the other side, if we're going to go to the right to get to that point, we're going to go to the left, which is going to be 2 more, which is at negative 5. We went 2 and a half to get to that point, so we're going to have to go 2 and a half to come down. That's a total of 4 and a half, which is also known as negative, five, negative 9 halves. The next point's a little bit trickier, so it could just be easier for you to calculate it rather than deal with the quarters or sixths. Six is really difficult. Uh, X equals, let's see, what number are we going to plug in here? We went two to get to that one, two more to get to that one, and two more. Just like we went by twos here, I'd suggest to go by twos there. Again, you can put in any numbers you want, as long as they're 3 on the left side. So when x is negative 9, I get 18 minus 1. Negative 2 times negative 9 is 18, minus 1, which is 17. And negative 2 plus 3, no, let me be sure, it's negative 9 plus 3, which is negative 6. So this is negative 17 sixths, which is almost 3. And then our 7, when x equals negative 7, 14 minus 1 is 13. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. So if you use your calculator, you're going to get decimals. We're looking for fractions. So, that was 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're going down just over 3. 1, 2, 3, because 12 over 4 is exactly 3, so 13 over 4 is a little bit more. This is almost 3. 18 over 6 would be 3. This is 17 over 6. Out at 9, we're going to go 1, 2, 3. Almost 3 down, but not quite. And our equation is negative 2x minus 1 over x plus 3. Our domain in the range, 
Our domain are all the x values that you could possibly type into the equation. We can do any x value we want, so let's consider it all real numbers, except it cannot be the asymptote. x equals negative 3. Same thing for the range. You can get any answer, except you cannot get x equals negative 2. On the flip side, we have a story problem. We're talking about long distance calling. Back in the day, there was a concept that you had to pay to call farther away. That was called long distance. So we know that there's a fee, an automatic fee, $4.95, and then it costs five cents per minute as you talk. So the cost per minute is going to be five cents and so we have to use 0 0.05 so the units match a dollar because we're using four dollars and 95 cents per minute plus four dollars and 95 cents and if we're going to look for the average that means we have to divide it by the number of minutes so you take your total cost that's what this would be. Your total cost divided by the minutes tells you what each minute individually costs. And that's including your 495. So doing this by hand would be a little tougher with your small decimals. So we can use our graphing calculator. We have minutes and we have cost. So we'll come over and type our equation in, which, since the numerator is a binomial, it has two parts to it, we have to use parentheses, 0 0.05 for each minute, and your $4.95 all of that is being divided by your number of minutes. Now you could go to table and that'll show you all the numbers for X. But we have got to get up to 20, then 40, then 60. So you might want to try second, hit your second button and your window, and you come to this table setup. With the table setup, you can see the table is changing by ones. So you could change that, change it by 20s, that'd be great. But here's an also another option, you can go to the independent variable. It's typically highlighted for auto, so it's going to show you every value that matches this requirement. But we're going to go into ask. It's going to ask us what x values we want to use. Alright, let me get rid of what I already had there kind of show you what we have. All right, so what we're going to do is type in a 20. So when we type in 20, it calculates what the Y value would be. So after 20 minutes, the average cost is just about 30 cents per minute. And at 40 minutes, it drops considerably down to 17 cents a minute. And at 60 minutes of talking, it, there's an average cost of 13 cents per minute. And after 80 minutes of talking, that's just about 11 cents. So when we plot those out, after 20 minutes, we're at 0.3. At 40 minutes, we're just under 0.2. At 60 minutes, we're just under 0.5. And at 80 minutes, we're just over 0.1. So you, you look here and you try to determine should the graph curve here 
And should it come down towards zero? Should it curve towards the 10? Should it curve towards the five or somewhere else? How do we know what this approach is? We could go to our calculator. We could type in big numbers into that table. If you type in 10,000, you're going to get a number like 5 cents 0 0.05. If you type in 80,000, you're going to get 0 0.05, which is 5 cents and a little bit extra. And you can go craziness, and you still see that you're at 0 0.05. That's because here with the equation, the exponents are the same, so you use your leading coefficient. So you have your horizontal asymptote at 0 0.05. So we're going to approach the line 0 0.05, which is 5 cents. The more minutes you talk, the more your average amount is going to approach that five cents. So what happens to the average cost per minute as the number of minutes increase? Approaches point zero five dollars, which is five cents. So a little review from what we've talked about in the past. The graph, y equals 1 over x, that is known as a hyperbola. Those were the graphs we drew today also. Our translation equation was a over x minus h plus k. And that's going to give us x minus h that is our vertical asymptote. And we're going to have y equals k, which is our horizontal asymptote. These are your two type of asymptotes that come from here, h and k. When you graph these, you get two branches. And currently, we have one vertical and one horizontal asymptote per graph. In the future, you're going to see two vertical asymptotes. So much fun. Good luck.